Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Loretta Culture. All right, please tell us your name. My name is Victor Lopez. Hey, Victor, thank you so much for making the time for us. I no truly problem. appreciate it. No problem, brother. All right, please tell us about your car. Well, I have here a 1954 Tudor Hardtop Bel Air, uh, also known as La Palma. I've uh, had her for uh, uh, about 10 plus years. I've uh, started off first, I was going to buy it flip it but as I started to fix it up here and there uh, I got attached to it so I completely did it all up they all the chroming did all the body and paint um, did the airbag system uh, shout out to starlight they're the ones who did all the airbag system that's how that's how I got started with this one all right uh, please tell us the name of your car club true familia out of the harbor area all right, um, what does it take to be a True Familia member? Well, in our car club, we started this car club over a year ago, and we, uh, we came together in the community, and we all had cars, and we wanted to do something different. We didn't want to do the norm, like every other car club, they, have, um, they pay their dues, they, they um, do a lot of uh, inspections and things like that. We wanted to be more laid back. We wanted to, to our members to be more laid back, don't have to worry about things like that. So when we asked our members to join, we just asked them, bring us your car, bring us your family, because we all known each other for 30 plus years. So there's uh, everybody in the club knows each other from childhood or just growing up around one another. So, True Familia, that's what, our, that's what our car club's all about. It's about family, it's about togetherness, unity. Uh, we've all known each other 30 plus years, like I said. Um, that's what it takes to be from our car club. You just gotta be dedicated. You can't bring your BS into our car club. You cannot be belong, uh, be a part of another neighborhood. You can't be part of nothing. You have to be just tired of all the BS and just bring your car, bring your familia, and you're in. That's it, you're in, no, no dues to be paid, nothing. Just, just bring us your cars and, and let's have fun, man. All right, so what got you into the Loretta culture? What brought me into the Loretta culture was uh, growing up watching my older brothers. My older brothers had old cars, my uncles had old cars. Um, so it was something that was breeded into us. I had lowrider bikes to begin, little models. From models, I went to lowrider bikes, from lowrider bikes, I started my father gave me my first car it was a 6.7 Camaro my father gave us all a car it was six boys at the time oh, wow. he gave us all a car he gave my brother Bill a 56 Chevy he gave my brother Richard a 64 he gave my brother Gerardo a 76 LTD he gave me a 67 Camaro he gave my brother Armando a 77 <laughs> Monte Carlo and my brother Eddie a Mustang so my father gave us our first cars and said do with it as you please so that's how we got started and that's really cool. So what does the lowrider low culture mean to you? The culture means family, bro. La cultura de, of lowriding is culture, bro. That's its bottom line, man. It's bringing the culture back to society, man. It's just all about knowing where we come from, knowing our roots, and loving your family, bro. That's why we named it True Familia, because we have to really, really be dedicated and being glued into our family, bro. This is not just a car club where we just choose anybody just because you have a nice car. No, our car club is based upon family, bro. And that's what we want everybody to know that True Familia, that's what it means. We're true family. I'm not saying nobody else out there is real family. I'm just saying that's the reason why we named our car club True Familia because we have to be glued into that. Them are the principles, that's, that's the basic that everybody should know and everybody should be building upon, is family values. Those family values are in our cars. As if you could see our cars, we build them with love and our children could get in them. Our, our, my mother asked me to drive my car. I've 
she's 80 years old, I got her, she tried to drive stick. Pero, you know what I mean? She's always asking me, mijo, why aren't you gonna build a car with automatic? So she could drive it, because she loves them. But that's what, that's what my car club means to me, and that's what the culture means to me, bro. History. It's amazing. All right, let's talk a little bit more about your car. Okay, right here I have, uh, this color was picked out uh, green because when I looked at the tag when I first bought the car it said that originally this car was Bermuda green with the shoreline beige so I wanted to get close to it but I wanted to spice it up a little bit and it came out almost like a candy green so we get the body work done we got the paint done I took every chrome off of this car there's nothing that's repop on this car everything's original everything has been re-chromed re-polished I took my car over to Starlight. They did all the airbag system. It's C-notched in the back with the two-link. Uh, the front end has been reinforced. The interior has been redone to, to the springs. Um, all the accessories, thanks to Pomona Swap Meet and Long Beach Swap Meet, I was able to find hard-to-find parts. As you could tell, I put more teeth on the grill. Um, I got the, the end guards are the what they call the baby the baby bumpers because uh, those are those originally go on the back of a station wagon and those sit low enough for the blinkers to to be uh, visible and um, yeah as you can see everything else uh, has been part of my uh, journey and pouring out my love into this car this car I love it we call it La Palma my brother Mondo called it La Palma because one day I pulled up and the palm trees in our driveway were reflecting off the car. And he says, hey bro, that looks like a palma. So we called it La Palma. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, we put a little mural in the back with La Palma. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what I did to my car. We rebuilt the engine, redid the tranny. Um, since then, man, she's beautiful. She's been giving me no problems. Uh, and like I always tell everybody, she only lays for me. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, she only lays for me, brother. So can you can you tell us what is, what is this for? That right there, it's a speedometer. So it's a bug deflector. So what happens is that at night, one or in the day, as you're driving, if little rocks or snow hits is going towards your windshield, it will deflect them. But this one has a little hole here that when as you're going, the speed wind will start to raise it, and you times it by ten. So if it's on two, that means that the car is going 20 miles per hour, 30, 40 miles per hour, 50 miles. So it's another speedometer. So you can look outside your car as you're going and it tells you how fast you're going. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. The technology they had back in those days, you'd be amazed of the technology. And as you see on the side, it has an ashtray on the side of the wing window that as you drove, you could um, flick your ashes at the ashtray as you're driving. <laughs> and these are a water deflectors, so as if when it's raining, the water comes down into this gutter and it shoots the water out this way. And then these are the rain uh, deflectors, other ones. They're hard to find because these are only for sedans, but very rare you'll see them for the hardtops. This piece here belongs to a Oldsmobile. And I put these on because this is what's in right now that's called shark fins. I was able to do that. Also like the Continental kit, that kit was, uh, I was purchased that years ago from a member from Old Memories Car Club. His wife didn't want the car no more. They took it off and they sold it, but they sold me the bumper kit. So I put it on and everybody really likes it because it doesn't stick out like I call a diving board. I don't like those Continental kits. We all have our own preferences and that's my preference. Uh, this is a, a wigwag. Back in the days, uh, back in the 30s, when people would press on the brakes, they didn't really have brake lights. So that, they called it a wigwag, and it would go left to right and light up. It'll let the people in the back that you're about to brake. That came out in the 30s. And I put it on as an accessory just to, it's a conversation piece. And these tailpipe fins here, I bought them at Starlight. They're original. They came off, those came from the 60s. And they're very hard to find. I paid very good money for those. And he has another pair and he don't want to sell them to me. <laughs> but I'll get them. And uh, 
yeah, as you can tell, it's been C-framed. It lays real good. Like I said, she only lays for me. And she only does what I ask her to do. <laughs> so you can't tell her to lay unless I'm there. <laughs> uh, can we talk about your uh, airbag suspension? Yeah, the airbag suspension uh, was done uh, by Starlight Customs. They're out of uh, Vermont and Lameda Boulevard. They're very, very well uh, equipped to do old cars. They did the back system, they C-framed it, they uh, put a two-link in it, they cut the inside so then the rear end, the dry shaft will go into the car so it gives it uh, more room to lay on the floor. The front has been all reinforced. I, I was going to put a Mustang front end but I did not do it for reasons so I just kept the original front end but it's been all re reinforced. It has uh, the, the original old uh, airbag system, which is going to be upgraded soon. Um, just like the color bar that I have inside, that's from the 70s. And uh, as we all know, that uh, goes to the beat of the music. The red hat, the red headed flashlight, that's another accessory that's in the car. Uh, I try to give it a so, I don't want to give it too much accessories where it looks like, uh, like, um, Como se dice? It looks like a um, memorial. <laughs> you know, I don't want people getting in my car and asking me, man, did somebody die in here? You got so many <laughs> accessories. I just pick out accessories that stand out to me. So uh, very few, not many, very few. I think uh, people should keep it subtle. Not too much because when you crowd the car, you take away from the beauty of the car. So therefore, I like to keep it simple. Uh, do you mind if we take a look at the airbag system? No problem. Dordo, can you help me? See, I have uh, a pop trunk on this. So when I open up this, my brother will help me open the... There you go. The airbag system is all hidden. It's been all reupholstered. has uh, six by nines, has the woofers, but everything is concealed, as you can see. That's so cool. And I had this this uh, pop trunk put in because of Continental Kit. So whenever I want to pop the trunk, I hit that button in there and it pops my trunk with the assistance of my brother. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I take a look at the engine? Jardo, can you pop the hood? My assistant. <laughs> you, you guys know my brother. He was on one of your episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 235 motor has been rebuilt. Uh, I'm still in the process of uh, doing the motor compartment, but as you can see, um, it's in the process of getting it done. But it's rebuilt. Has uh, all the original. Uh, parts to it. it has the chrome uh, horns I've chromed a couple of things but it's decent decent enough to uh, open my hood at a car show but not bad enough to win a prize <laughs> but decent enough no it's beautiful thank you thank you we try bro we try Seriously, you just can't beat the smell of an old engine. That's it. That's it. It's beautiful. When you're driving down the street and, you know, it, the engine warms up, you can smell the paint, you can smell the oil. And, man, uh, you could have somebody from the old days in the car and they'll say, man, I miss that old smell. You know, it's just exactly what you just said. Yep. So true, man. You know, especially when you buy a car and you get in it, you can smell the, the, the upholstery. Man, that's, you can't beat it. Man, I wish they could come up with a spray that you could spray in your car and it gives it that authentic <laughs> smell. Man, I'd be buying it because there's nothing like it. You hit it right on the bot, uh, on the dot, man. You cannot, cannot get that smell back. That's why we like to leave some things that are original, you know? Yeah. And yeah, we love it. We love these cars. And then I got the headlight covers. Those things are called... Uh, Bumble, bumblebee lights 
And people back in the 50s, they would put those on if they lived like by a lot of mountains and it would be foggy by the ocean, they'd put those on. And then when it was foggy, they would put them on and it would serve as a, um, a reflector from the smog, you could, you could, from the fog, I mean, you could see through the fog. Then they would take them off and then they'd put them on. So that's why in the other cars, you see the big fog lights that they have on the front. That's for that reason only, for the fog uh, when they're driving by the canyons. But these, these here, I put them on because uh, it gives it another look. And they serve its purpose. All right, can we talk about the interior of the car, please? The interior, it, has the, it was the original pattern was done. I wanted the original look, but I changed the material. It's a, uh, that material came from six, a 63 Chevy. I liked it, the pattern, the look, so I put that in there with a one inch tuck uh, with vinyl uh, um, inserts, vinyl top, vinyl top on the back seat. Um, the speaker board, I wanted to have the original look, so I had the holes punctured in the back where the speakers could breathe. I didn't want to put the speaker covers, so I put those so it gives it the originality look. Um, dashboard was also painted a different green. Uh, this car, if you notice it, it has five different colors of green on it because that's back in the 50s, a Cadillac, they wanted to paint their cars with five different colors of red, yellow, orange, whatever they had. So I took that and I, I applied it to this car. So if you step back and you look at it, you see five different colors of greens and all these greens, they go with each other. They don't crash, they don't clash. They go work, they work good to, together. That's why I did that. That's why you see these greens, if you notice, they just blend right in real nice. And then these side view mirrors, these are accessory mirrors. If you see, they have the spotlight handles, but they have the mirror. And you could operate the mirrors with the handles. Uh, a lot of people like the, the spotlights, but I did these because these, are, these mirrors here are hard to find, especially the, the right one, very hard to find. So I put those on instead. I like to be different. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, this is La Palma from uh, True Familia Car Club out of the Harbor area. Um, it's our sweat and tears, brother. You know what I mean? This We work real hard to put these cars together. And believe it or not, these cars are put together for you guys out there to inspire you guys, that you guys can also build a car like this. Because when I was young, growing up, having my little lowrider bike, I used to see my older homeboys cruise by in fleet lines, and, and that inspired me. So I want to inspire all you guys out there that are coming up in the lowrider community. You could do it too, bro. This is why we build them, for you guys out there. All right, Victor, uh, thank you so much for making the time for us. I truly appreciate it. Uh, any shout outs? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to the kid, wink, wink, and to my family, uh, thanking them for all the support they've given me, you know, having all my junk in the backyard and putting up with all my things, uh, my kids, and uh, especially to the ones that we don't have with us today, you know, that taught us how to build cars like my brother Richard want to give out a shot to him may you rest in peace um, and like I said man this is all for you guys man a shout out to all of the lowrider community that we got to keep on doing it bro because this is a, this is a, a culture and we can't let this culture die bro we got to keep on going strong bro that's right all right everybody thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys next time and remember if you're watching this you are the lowrider culture you're la raza.